News at 10, I'm Christopher Berry. Today we have a special report from our chief reporter in the field, Xavier Pye. This is Behind the Hay Curtain. Thanks Chris. The BBC has been given exclusive access to film a documentary on Animal Farm. This is Animal Farm Behind the Hay Curtain. Before we show you this documentary, we will give you an insight on what the farm was like before the animals overthrew Mr. Jones. Here is a Country File episode filmed a year ago before the revolution. My name's Rupert Cookson, and this is Country File. Today, we're at Mr. Jones' farm. I'm here today with Mr. Jones on this farm. Mr. Jones, nice to meet you. Oh, how do you do? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. So, um, how long have you been on this farm? My whole life. Really? Wow. Yeah. How did you get it? Did you buy it? Or? I inherited it from my father's passing oh, yeah. uh, ten so years ago. Well, it's got such beautiful views. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a quite. Farm. Yeah. So, what kind of animals do you keep? Oh, I keep uh, pigs, uh, cattle, chickens. Wow. Yeah, the whole lot. And do you sell them or do you, you use uh, them? The food? pigs I give to a local butcher and the cows are for milk. Right. Well. Um, can I possibly see the animals? Yes, it's, I'll take you there now. Thank you. So uh, over there are the sheep, um, over over there are the uh, cattle, oh, yes. as you can see, and here's the pig. A so pig. Um, what are your views on animal cruelty? Well, my views on animal cruelty are this. <laughs> so Napoleon, what's just happened? He hit me. Who hit you? Farmer Jones. And is this a regular occurrence? Yeah. How often does this happen? Every day. Every day? Most wow. days. Most days. Wow. And are you going to do anything about this? Well, a pig called Old Major. He came up with a plan. And it might not happen in my lifetime, but any other. But it'll happen one day. And us animals, we will take over. Take over what? The farm. The farm. England. England. The world. Wow. After that horrific account by Country File, it is no wonder why the animals overthrew Mr. Jones. In this next interview, I interview Farmer Fredericks, a neighbour to Animal Farm. Mr. Fredericks. Hello. 
You're uh, Mr. Germ's neighbour? Yes, well I was, before the animals took over. And are you uh, afraid of the spread of so-called animalism? Well, not to our farm especially, because our animals tried to rise up, but we were strong and crushed the rebellion. So I don't, and made an example out of the animals that tried, so I don't think they'll be trying it again anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I do think it could become a nationwide problem, though, as other animals on other farms think that they can gain their independence and rule themselves, which is utterly ridiculous and ultimately dangerous. Yes, quite. And um, have you ever helped Mr Jones try and reclaim his farm from these animals? Well, yes. At the Battle of Cowshed, we attempted to take the farm back, but we were fighting off. We were fought off by a crazed pig. And uh, do you think this pig was the rumoured Napoleon, uh, head of Animal Farm? I, I don't know. I can't be sure. OK. It could have been. And have you ever gotten revenge for that uh, lost battle at Cowshed? Well, yes. Um, we bought all their wood yeah. for counterfeit money so that they did not have money to uh, help run the farm. And we also blew up their windmill so they do not have electricity to help with the farm. Right. Well, um, that must have been quite a blow for Animal Farm. Yes, Thank yes, you. it was. Thanks, Mr. Frederick. Napoleon. Yes. Uh, you are the head of Animal Farm. Yes, yes, I am. Apparently, you used to have a contester called Snowball who was very popular. I, I... Remember. Well, he wasn't a, ever a contester. We always worked together, but we found out that he was working with humans, Mr. Fredericks, and farmers to try and overthrow Animal Farm and bring back the humans. And uh, but this must have been quite a, a hard decision. To, I mean, hard fact to take in for the animals, especially the ones that were less, uh, s not as smart as the pigs like here, um, because he was very popular among the vo animal voters. As. Well, he was very popular, but it was, there was overwhelming evidence that he was working against us yeah. and for human interests. I remember a horse, I think, called Boxer saying that Napoleon is always right, so... Well, I am always right. Ah. Um, as well as that, the rules, uh, the, the rules, they've changed. I, I, they used to say that uh, no animal shall see, sleep in a bed, and uh, we have photo evidence that you have slept in a bed? Well, we changed those commandments to say that um, no animals should sleep in a bed with sheets, as sleeping in a bed is more civilised and prevents the spread of disease and just makes life easier for us pigs who have a very, very hard job running the farm. Yes, I'm sure, yes. And uh, as well as that... Uh um, there was another commandment change was no animal shall wear clothes or walk on two legs for that matter. Well, wearing clothes keeps you warmer, which prevents, which also prevents the spread of disease because it keeps you from getting cold. And so we are more healthy, so we can be, spend less time off, so we spend more time actually doing productive things with the running of the farm. And walking on two legs prevents your hands from getting dirty, so you so it also stops the spread of disease. And uh, what about alcohol? That, I mean, that's never, it's not good at all. Why, why has that changed? Well, we pigs, as we do everything for the farm, we decided that we should get some reward for the running of the farm. How is being drunk and disorderly a reward? I'd hardly call it drunk and disorderly. Ah. And um, would you say... Uh, do you like the change of the sheep song? Well, four legs good, two legs better is just works better because, as I have just said, yeah. standing on two legs keeps your hands clean and prevents the spread of disease. But um, I, I, this is quite discriminating towards animals that cannot walk on two legs, say a horse. So, and I thought all animals were equal. What, what do you have to say about that? All animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Are you just saying that it's because you can't change a horse? If they're born a horse, you are a horse? Right? Yes. Ah. And um, the, the, uh, the killing of many animals, you killed, uh, I think it was uh, three pigs... Uh, a few chickens that took part in the, uh, the egg protest. Well, they were protesting against animalism. 
they were trying but, but to... But no, no animal should kill another animal. Without um, cause. Founding. No animal should kill another animal without cause. These animals were going against our animal, going against animalism, the fundamentals of animalism, and just causing a nuisance on the farm and going against the productivity of the farm. And uh, what about the the puppies you've trained into guard dogs? From well, sheep, sheep they dogs? were. Why do we you feel the need to? We need guard dogs for protection. The pigs or the farm? The farm needs protection. Right. And if we pigs are not protected, the farm is unsafe. I, but I've seen, uh, I bear witness, in fact, to the cruelty these dogs show, particularly towards the chickens. Is, is that fair? Are they, only well, work, are they working for the farm or just the pigs? Well, no, they are working for the pigs, which are the farm. We are the farm. Ah. Well, thank you, Napoleon. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to be on Animal Farm. Okay, Napoleon, who is this? This is Mr Wimper. He's our connection with the outside world and he runs trade and other things for us on Animal Farm. I seem to remember that humans were banned on Animal Farm. I thought I was an exception, so... It Mr Wimper, he is allowed on Animal Farm to allow us to communicate with the outside world and take things to market so we get money to buy things that we need for the farm. So, Mr. Winter, you're quite uh, an essential part in this the farm, animal farm. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, and um, uh, uh, why why did you decide to uh, work for Animal Farm? I mean, so many human like no one else has ever thought of such a thing. Well, I saw a business opportunity in coming to Animal Farm, and I decided to take it, and it's turned out to be quite lucrative. And uh, but do you think you're in aid of a cause that is against humanity? If every animal, if every farm revolted, we would be kicked off the uh, top of the hierarchy of England, say. Yes, but there are certain exceptions. Okay. And um, uh, did, uh, am I right in saying you were uh, uh, fr uh, frauded? By Mr. Fred. Yes, um, we 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 were going to sell our wood so we could buy equipment to build our windmill to power the farm. But Mr. Fredericks, a nearby farmer, he sold he bought our wood off us for yeah. counterfeit money so we couldn't buy anything. Ah, and uh, uh, Mr. Wimper, are you going to pursue this in a court of law? As much as I would like to, I'm not able to, as a court would not accept a case from animals. Ah, okay. Well, uh, are you, is there any, are you thinking of any form of revenge at all, or are you going to stick within your borders? We are farm? considering it, but there's not much we can do, as Mr. Frederick's farm is quite strong, and there's, we are considering every option, but we don't think there's anything we can do. And uh, slightly off topic, that gun over there, is that, uh, what, when do you fire it? We fire it every year. Um, on the anniversary of the Battle of Cowshed, yes. which, to symbolise that we can fight off the humans. Yes. And uh, uh, do, you, uh, uh, do you think uh, that having a, a man-made object or of that power on your farm is, uh, kind of goes against animalism? You're having a man-made object that put you, once put your kind to death. Yes, but we're showing that we overcome, we overcame that, and we are just, it shows that we are strong because we can overcome guns. Okay, and you never once, ne uh, never once have you uh, had the temptation to use it? No, not, not at all. Not even against a human? Not at all. Right, well, thank you, Mr. Wimper. Thank you. And Napoleon. Thank you. Thanks. Napoleon, who is this pig? This is my right-hand pig, Squealer. And Squealer, uh, is he the second in command, would you say? Yes, he is. And Squealer, what do you do? I'm head of propaganda. Propaganda, and what sort of propaganda do you spread? Uh, we spread animalistic ideals. And um, how do you spread these ideals? Um, mainly through pigeons um, and radio. Ah, and you found the radio in uh, thingy's ha uh, Mr. Jones' house? Yes. Ah. And uh, do you, where do you spread this? Uh, these... Um, how do you spread this propaganda? Uh, do you, I mean, do you spread it locally or to other farms? We spread it to other farms. Ah. 
And uh, I see you two are wearing clothes and standing on two legs. And uh, rumor has it that the commandments used to say that uh, clothes were banned. Is that true? Well, as we, the pigs who rule the farm, um, need to be constantly in top physical condition and top mental condition, we decided that we should be allowed to wear clothes to keep us warm and in good health, to stop us getting sick. Oh, I guess, especially in weather like this. Yeah, yes, of course. Yeah. And um, what about the four legs good, two legs bad? Um, I heard that that song has changed, was it? Nothing well, has changed. No, it has been changed to four legs good, two legs better, as walking on two legs is more civilised and prevents your hands getting dirty, so you can improve cleanliness and prevents disease and illness. I see. Okay. And, um, and who oversaw the changing of the song? Um, well, Squealer did. Squealer, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Was there a low point ever? Because I heard from a chicken that it might be your wife. But I have a wife, I'm a chicken. Ah, uh, apparently uh, the, there was an egg in his meat. Egg? Oh yes, Napoleon, he stole our eggs. Well, not my eggs, because I'm a man chicken, but uh, the other chicken's eggs. Aha. Uh-huh. And uh, apparently there was an uprising. Did you take that? No, no, I didn't. Um, everyone who took part in it was killed. Ah, uh, I thought that uh, in some commandments an animal should kill another animal. Well, no, it says no animal should kill another animal without cause. Uh. This is the end of the BBC documentary. Thank you for, wa- for watching. This has been Behind the Hay Curtain with me, Xavier Pye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Lobster. <laughs> <laughs>